if life were a simulation, a video game, if you will, if that were true, really sink into it, what would change? First of all, and this is for all you, uh, you know, you victims out there, the people who feel very sad about the cards that life dealt to them. Remember this, you don't need quote unquote aces or amazing cards to have an amazing experience. Okay, if you've ever played a card game, winning isn't the answer. It's not about like, I'm number one, I won the game, right? I mean, of course that's cool, but why do you play a card game for the actual experience? And guess what? If you have terrible cards, again, terrible cards, does that mean that your experience playing the game is going to be horrible? Of course not. You can still have a blast. So this is my take, and the first thing I want to touch on here, you might be thinking, you know what? The cards I would dealt are just terrible. Poor me, right? Um, usually people focus on money and looks. Those are the two big ones. Like, let's look at the money card that life dealt me. Well, that's not all that. Okay, what about the looks card that life dealt me? It's not all that either. Ugh. And what do they do? They put the cards down and whine and complain. And you know what feels even better than whining and complaining? Gathering around with other whiners and complainers, and then looking up to a leader of whiner and complainers. This is still very, very a thing here today, by the way. There's even whole YouTube channels of whiners and complainers, and they recruit the whiner and complainer following. It's insane. Okay, so if right now you feel like a victim, if you're whining and complaining, you know, the land of victimhood is really, if you've ever watched the show Big Mouth on Netflix, um, there's a character called Depression Kitty. That's the land of Depression Kitty. Instead of taking responsibility and actually doing something about your life, hey, actually taking action and moving up, it's Depression Kitty pops up and, uh, you know, don't you want to just lie down in bed and just... Uh, don't do anything. Maybe jump on one of those complain or YouTube channels and listen to someone else complain for a change and agree with it and just, you know, feel so sorry about yourself and your miserable cards that life dealt you and how life is unfair. Wouldn't that feel good? Right, that's the land of grief. For that, foot down and no. <laughs> Depression kitty, no. Okay, here's the key. No matter what cards you were dealt, sure you can whine about them, or you can realize, you know what? I don't need two aces to have an amazing experience. I've had so many amazing experiences playing cards. Again, we're going with the card analogy here first, um, where I didn't win at the end, where I just had terrible cards the entire way through, but I loved every second of it. Why? Because the purpose of a game isn't to win, it's to play the game, it's the actual experience. Same here, the purpose of life isn't to win. What is winning? We all, no matter what you do, we all, get the same thing in the end. We all win the same. What is winning in life? It's dying. That's it. No matter how you live your life, no matter what you do, no matter how amazing your cards are, no matter how good looking you are or how much money you have, you know what happens to you in the end? You wanna know what your prize is, your reward is, in the end, you die. That's it, no matter what. So instead of obsessing, am I winning in my head? Hey, you're gonna die. No matter what, you're gonna die. What about taking your focus away from winning and being obsessed with that? Well, are my cards better than other people's cards? Where do I stand? What about enjoying the experience, enjoying the game called life where there really are no winners and losers because in the end, we all die, okay? That's the first thing, and this is especially for people who are, again, stuck in this grief victim mentality. Now, here's the thing. When you play a video game, you still experience the same range of emotions, right? You still experience, for example, excitement, fear, anxiety, so on and so forth. But for some reason, in the video game, it's much lighter, isn't it? Think about it, right? When you're playing a video game, sure, there's anxiety, but the character experiencing anxiety is very different than the player, you, experiencing anxiety because you're not identified as the character. The same as people who attach their self-worth to success, right? It's like, the more I achieve, the better I am. That's the character. Can a character in a video game level up? Of course. As the character levels up, does that make the character a better character? Of course. Does that affect you as a player? Does that make you a better person? No. And that 
is what you realize when you start letting go and start diving deep inside is you change your relationship with life. You can still crush it in this thing called life. You can still be quote unquote successful, complete missions, right? Enhance and level up your character, but your self-worth isn't affected. You're not trying to justify your existence through the character. You are enough and you're playing this game and enjoying once more the experience. And really let this sink in too, right? We try to avoid negative emotions, but if you were playing a game without negative emotions, it'd be the most boring game ever. It'd be like playing the game on God mode. And we think that's the answer, right? If I could just get rid of all those emotions I don't like, and I could just live life on God mode, sure, temporarily, for a brief second, you might be like, this is amazing, right? No matter where I aim, it's an automatic headshot. But after a while, so boring. It's like, headshot, 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 ugh. You'd actually be in a state of apathy. You need the contrast, you need the ups and downs, but your experience of it changes, okay? Every emotion here, if you don't like feeling a certain emotion, it's because you're too close to it. You're still the character experiencing it. You haven't let go and changed your relationship with it. Okay, another perspective that helps illustrate this point is, imagine right now, you don't wanna feel sad. Right? We're talking about depression, kitty. Now, the reason you don't enjoy feeling sad is because you've labeled sad as bad, you're identifying with it, you're making it mean something about you, and as soon as you start feeling sad, you feel bad about it, and then you feel bad about feeling bad about feeling bad about feeling bad, and it's endless. Imagine here, really play this game with yourself. Imagine from the moment you were born, everyone around you, society, every YouTube video, every live stream was telling you, you know what? Feeling sad is the best. Feeling sad. Ooh, that's the goal of life. You know when you're the most attractive, when you're sad. And say you've been conditioned that way your entire life. What would happen now if you're sad? You'd be like, oh, I'm sad. A completely different experience. So the problem isn't the emotion, it's your relationship with the emotion. Your problem isn't life, it's your relationship with life. Your problem isn't the heaviness, it's your relationship with it. And that's what letting go is. That's what spiritual work is. That's what spiritual enlightenment is. It's not non-duality. That's being the player completely. It's like, no, you're not there to only be the player. You're here to be, to realize you're the player and play the game called life. So you still want to partake in this world, but it's coming from a very different place. A key quote from yours truly, it's not the thing, it's the place it's coming from. It's not the emotion, it's your relationship with it. It's not the problem, it's your relationship with it. It's not you, it's your relationship with yourself. Imagine right now, someone handed you, this is my favorite example, someone handed you GTA 20, right? It's not out yet, it's coming out in the future. GTA 20, here you go. Um, it's super realistic, however, you have seven days to play. Here's GTA 20, seven days to play, uh, give it back to me in seven days. How would you play that game so that in seven days, when you give the game back to me and I ask you, so, what did you do? Did you enjoy it? How did you play during these seven days? You're like, you know what? I just milked this game. I milked the experience to the fullest. How would you play the game? Would you play it as the taxi cab person? Well, um, I uh, did a lot of taxi cab missions. You know, I've, look, I collected a lot of money. That's what you did? No, you would play it in a very authentic way. You would explore, you would do it. It feels authentic to you. You would discover your purpose in life. Treat life that way. Right? If you think about life, none of us once more get, here, get out of here alive. Right? There's actually a, a book, uh, No One Here Gets Out Alive, from a Doors song, um, a Jim Morrison biography. I read that years ago. I was like, oh, no one here gets out alive. But it's true, right? We try to so hard to survive, yet we all die. You can't take anything with you. You can't take your money with you, your looks with you. You can't even take this vessel with you. Yet we're so obsessed about that. But ultimately, how are you gonna live it so that when you die, you look back and you're like, that was a crazy experience. I stay true to myself and I really played this game called life. That's your purpose. And you also realize that there are no imposed purposes. And this is where we touch on this nihilism point. Well, no matter what you do, you die, so what's the point? You know what? I like that there is no point. Why? Because that allows you to come up with your own point. You don't want to point imposed on you, because what does that mean? Oh, here's your purpose, it's imposed on you. And what if it's not something you enjoy? What if it's not something that's authentic to you? Then you're screwed. 
We're like, well, I got to live up to this purpose. No, the beauty of no point is you, right? You get to come up with your own point. That's the beauty. Hey, no point. Let me come up with my own point. Remember GTA? This is like, I want the imposed missions. Imagine you pass all the missions. You want all the missions. And now you're free roaming, right? No more missions. You're free roaming. You can go wherever you want in the map. Do whatever you want. It's very to be like, well, there's no mission. So what's the point? Screw this. Or I'm free. Let me come up with my own missions that will make this experience great. Okay, so notice. You're at the tip here. You can go to nihilism or freedom and true enlightenment. And that's what enlightenment is. It's realizing, you know what? Yes, I'm the character, but I'm also the player. I'm not trying to identify with the character. I'm playing through this character in this game and this simulation and this thing called life. And the result is the experience. And that doesn't mean don't have goals. Right? Think of that video game. If you're free roaming at the end and you don't have goals, it gets boring very fast. So the key is you come up with your own authentic goals, but not so that when you accomplish them, you're like, yay, I accomplished them. The beauty of an authentic goal is it enhances the present moment experience. It enhances the free roaming. Okay, so once more. If life were a simulation or a video game, that's what would change. And these perspectives can help you tremendously. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I'm just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing. That's awesome <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things i'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies i'm having what you do is a huge inspiration to me and i think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world you save my life man i'm telling you that's this is Sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you. Find people who are where you are in life and model them, work with them. I would not be here if I didn't have people who held me accountable. Wow. <laughs> I just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches, it's incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just have my tears of joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was phenomenal. This program was, uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.